nos waithau palb. Sidaki heno, dwi wedi cael with nos brusir in gweithio ar ein unis. Heno dwi'n mynd i siarad am iechyd methol. The past year has been tough for everyone. Phrases that we'd barely even heard of 12 months ago have become part of our daily vocabulary. Self-isolation, shielding, mask hygiene, mass vaccination centres, furlough, R rate, social distancing. These are words that are all commonplace now, but the implications that go with them have been immense socially and economically. One of the biggest but maybe least publicised impacts of the pandemic combines these social and economic pressures. That is the impact which COVID has had on our mental health. Over the past few months, COVID has made us increasingly aware of the mental health and well-being of ourselves and of others. Shielding and lockdown pushed thousands of people into severe isolation. We may not have seen our loved ones or had a hug for months. We've been kept away from work, from school, recreation, friends and other support structures. And it's been exceptionally challenging for all of us kept at home by fear or by necessity. Some of us are or will have friends or family who are key workers, people who've been at the very front line in our shops, schools, hospitals, care homes, working on public transport or carrying out other essential roles. The fear of going to work or indeed knowing a loved one is putting themselves at risk for the sake of others day after day can lead to severe anxiety. Those of us who've had COVID or know someone who has will understand the very real fear that this virus brings. Whilst there are patterns to its behaviour and clear risk groups, it's not stopped COVID from taking young and apparently healthy young people from us. Each person lost is a family in grief. And for those who recover, the long-term physical and emotional effects can be huge. For the many who've been furloughed, lost work or are struggling to keep businesses afloat, the stress of uncertainty and financial loss may be a daily worry. These are just some of the ways in which COVID has impacted on the mental health of our nation in just a few months. We're now in January, a month traditionally known for the January blues, when short days and grey skies take their toll on our mood. And so, this January, it is even more important that we keep a check on our own and others' mental health. In the next few weeks, I will be distributing a mental health leaflet to homes all across our island. Mental health problems transcend all boundaries. It doesn't matter what colour you are, what language you speak, what age you are, what gender you identify as, or how much money you have. Everyone is susceptible. My leaflet introduces local and national support services that can help you and others tackle mental health and wellbeing issues. It also marks the launch of my Mental Health 100 campaign. This campaign aims to get 100 people on Anglesey trained in mental health awareness. Mental health conditions are invisible. Unlike a broken leg, they can be easily hidden and a person can be outwardly healthy and happy whilst hiding real suffering on the inside. Mental health awareness training will teach you about common mental health conditions and help reduce the stigma of mental health issues. It won't make you a psychiatrist or a nurse, but it will give you the tools to spot warning signs for mental health issues in yourself and others. It will help you to handle crises and intervene before a problem becomes an emergency. And it will help you provide first aid for someone in a challenging situation. I've teamed up with the local conversations team at Monsieur and they will deliver accredited distance learning courses in mental health awareness. I've also secured sponsorship to pay for training for those who could not otherwise afford it. Anyone in any walk of life can benefit from mental health awareness training. So I encourage you to get in touch with me, become one of my 100 and help save lives. Jokam Urando, Dwin Edraik Umlain at Sharad Evochi, Kimokovaul.